All right, it's 2000 Oldsmobile Bravado, which is the same thing as the Jimmy and the um, Blazer. So I've uh, already got the door panel off. I've looked at this before. I've got a pretty good action plan of how I'm going to do this. So underneath here, that's where the motor is, right there. So when I play with the switch, you can hear it clicking. So there it is. So it's clicking. So that means the switch is fine. That means the power going to everything is fine. It's not a wiring issue. It's the motor. And the motor's probably just jammed um, on a specific place. Like the brushes need to be cleaned or something like that. Uh, I even tried some tricks like banging it a little bit with a hammer. Sometimes that frees these things. You know, you hear those urban legends about fixing starters that way too. But it's only a temporary fix. So I need to get this off. I'm going to try to clean the brushes on it, see what happens. If not, I'll have to replace the motor. So the nice thing about this back one is it comes off way easier than the front motor. The way these things are designed is this whole um, regulator assembly is one unit. So really, the way you're supposed to do it is knock these holes out with like a, with a punch or something, or you can try to drill it out, but you can just punch them out with a nail and uh, this whole unit will come out along with the uh, basically the arms that lift the window up and down so this is called a regulator assembly um, I just want to get the motor off because I think the motor is all I need so there's some different ways to get these off I've seen people use a uh, like a big giant punch to, to knock these off with a, a chisel actually to knock these off I'm just going to use a grinder and I'm going to grind these things off so it depends on what you got lying around your house if you use a big enough drill bit you can probably actually drill it off too so I'm just going to use a grinder grind the tops of these off and this whole thing will just pop right off okay got the end shaved off now I'm kind of prying this off there it goes and it just comes right out ah there is one right there, but these other two will come right out. Huh. We'll have to figure that out. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to start playing with this motor, see what's going on with it. So here we are, got it off. I'm going to bench test it. Just got a little motorcycle battery hooked up to this right now. And of course, right now, it's going to... Oh, look, it's going to run just fine. So I bet if I put it back in there, it would work. But it'd probably end up getting jammed again. Um, so I'm still going to take this apart. Um, need some Allen. Oh, actually, no, those are Torx bits. So you need some Torx bits to get in here to get these uh, four screws off. Or if you don't have Torx bits, I don't know, maybe you could try using some pliers or something. But I've got the right tools for the right to do the job right. Okay, so I got the four screws out. This is going to come apart really easy. What's nice about the second gen body styles uh, of these uh, Jimmys and Bravadas and uh, the Blazer <laughs> is the nice thing about these is uh, they're screws that take apart. Uh, the first gens had a, uh, um, uh, a weird thing where they were kind of like bent over and, and kind of smashed together. So to get those apart were a little bit harder. The disadvantage with this one is once it comes apart, it's kind of a pain to do this. So I'm going to warn you right now, don't pull this apart unless you've seen what's involved in getting it back together in the rest of this video. So this should just come right off. So I'll see that, woohoo, just pulling it straight back. Plow comes right apart. So looking in here, you can see that the brushes, you know, it's got that mark on there. So, I'll, or excuse me, the rotor. And I'm going to use some really fine sandpaper, probably like 800 or something like that, sand that off, spray it out, and the brushes, they are, uh, they, they still got some tension, they still got some life on them. So what I'm looking for is, is how much life is left on these brushes. So you can tell by how far they're pushed out. So how far they're pushed out versus how much, you know, space there still is on this, this little rotor. So it looks like, you know, once I have it back in here, there'll still be a good amount of tension. So. It looks like I'm not wasting my time. So I'm going to use a little bit of sandpaper, clean these off on the ends, clean that off, and then next I'm going to show you how to put this thing back together. So you can actually pull this whole thing out of the cylinder here. Uh, just pull it straight out and it will come apart. It's just It feels like it's in there, but it's just magnetism holding it in. So I've cleaned it off and what I'm looking for now is, is in between these little cracks, um, 
color separate if there's any debris in there. Um, if there is, you know, you can probably like that right there. You know, I'm going to clean that out a little bit more uh, with a razor blade. Not going to put a lot of pressure on it, just barely any pressure, just to clean all that out so it's nice and clean. Alright, so this is what I got going on here. I need to get this brush to come back. So I can't put the motor back together until this brush is pulled back. Um, so this is something that's really similar to a lot of these other electric motors. I think I got this idea from working on my Chevy, my 57, and seeing a, a service uh, bulletin about how to uh, get the motor back together. And it was actually, no, it was in the shop manual. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this. This is a little piece of mechanics wire. Um, if you don't have any of that, get some. And if you still don't want to do that, you can probably use a paper clip. So I got this little hook here. And what I need to do is get the tension off of it. So I'm going to pull it all the way back. And then to right about where it's still in the little groove. I don't want to pull it back too far. So probably right around there. And then I'm just going to bend it and then it should hold in place. Okay, so that's one side. So the brush is pretty much all the way in. And that's what you want is the brush to go all the way in. So I might have to figure something else. To, there we go, now it's staying. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side here. So this is really hard to see because it's so tiny. But I'm, I'm making a hook. I don't wanna make too sharp of a hook because I'm gonna try to pull this out. And I'm just barely putting, um, a little crook in it so it's not a severe um, hook at all so uh, when you're making this just barely make it so it has enough of an angle more than a 90 degree angle maybe a 100 degree angle or maybe a 95 degree angle so that way it will hold the spring but not get hooked on it and never come off okay I've got the two clips in here holding the brushes all the way back and now all I need to do is to put the motor back together. Uh, I'm going to probably put a little bit more grease on that because some of it came off on my hand. I also put a little bit of grease in the bottom of here too. Um, so just do a teeny tiny bit, not, a, not more than you need. Actually, that is the sound of an A-10 warthog. So anyways, uh, the grease in here, jeez. There was already some grease in here that was spilled out, so I just reused that grease because that's that's GM grease. That's just the good stuff, baby. So don't put too much on in there because you don't want it to fling out. So I'm going to put a little bit more on there, and then I'm going to try to assemble these. Make sure you have the clocking position correctly on this, which I've already forgotten, and I need to double check what that is. All right, so the clocking position is rubber pad uh, spaces the door panel. Okay, got the hooks in there for attempt number two. I put a little bit more of an angle on the end to get them to hold down. Uh, this back one's hard because this connection's in the way. So whatever you need to do to get it to where they pull back, just do that. Uh, but make sure you don't bind that spring too much because we're going to have to pull them back out. So I got the uh, brushes pushed all the way back uh, just by you know grabbing this wire up here. Uh, excuse me, and that seems to hold it. So now. Let's see if this will go together. There we go. So, that should be in there. I'm going to pull these wires out. There's one. other and look at that closes right up so now I just need to put my four screws in and test it all right so here I got the uh, motor some alligator clips on those those uh, used to be readily available at Radio Shack and until it didn't exist anymore so just get some online alligator clips so hooking it to a 12 volt battery positive negative positive negative and plow Cup plow. Look at that. It's going. Now, I wouldn't actually, you know, these motors are so cheap. You can get them for like 40 bucks. I don't know if I would go through all this trouble normally to repair these motors. 
I'm kind of a big OEM guy. You know, I know the OEM stuff is, is always better. The original equipment manufacturer, in this case, GM. Uh, that stuff's always going to be better. You know, you can always find the cheap stuff. Dorman, that used to be the cheapest. Now there's stuff even cheaper than Dorman. That's, you know, a counterfeit Dorman product coming from China. You can get these motors, like I said, for about 40 bucks. So do you want one that you're going to buy brand new that's going to fall apart in a few years, maybe, or rebuild your original GM one? I went to the route of rebuilding my GM one. Okay, so all these old rivets didn't come out the way I thought they would. Two of them did, but this one right here, um, there's no way to get it out without completely disassembling this um, regulator and pulling out the uh, um, the gear that's behind it. So the way I did it to, to make this work was I used my grinder. Uh, if you don't have a grinder, you can use a hacksaw or something uh, to cut this off as close to um, the bracket as possible, the bracket of the regulator. So that way you, you, you cut it as close as you can right here and then it's essentially just going to fall off inside of the door and then you just take out the remaining piece that's just fell out. Because you don't want to leave this in here just hanging because there's a probability because this thing's loose that it will jam the gear mechanism. So you want to make sure you get this thing out. So the way I did it was to, to cut it off right here as close to the bracket as possible and then just kind of pushed it in with a, with a screwdriver or a Phillips and then it, it fell, it came loose and then just fell down inside of the door. So now I'm just going to use uh, two bolts to hold this on and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like installed. Notice I left this back one off. Uh, I wrestled with it for a while and I was able to get it to work on the front door uh, with a special kind of bolt, but this one uh, I was never able to get behind it because there's like zero clearance um, behind this thing. Uh, if you got the right kind of uh, uh, rivet tool, you could probably get in there and do that too, but uh, these two bolts it's also uh, anchored here in the middle too. This little pin goes through in the middle so that keeps it from, uh, so these are mainly to keep it from twisting. So I play with it a few times. It looks like it's in there really well because these bolts are way thicker than what was in there originally. These are uh, quarter inch bolts, coarse thread, and the length, uh, one inch was almost too short for these locking washers. Uh, if you're not going to use locking washers, one inch would work just, I mean locking nuts, uh, one inch would work just fine. Uh, but because I'm using these locking nuts with a little nylon thing in there, uh, uh, this is a, an inch and a quarter length. And these two bolts are in here and now it works. It goes up and down. Yay. I have to go over here to show the up because I also need to replace that switch. But everything works. And I just got to put the door panel back on and we're done.